T minus two minutes. Not as many reports coming in now as everyone stands by monitoring the va various consoles and watching the various parameters to assure everything is okay. For those just joining us, this is launch commentary of the Elegant Design Bureau Mimus 1 mission atop the new Saturn 1H rocket. We are still go at this time. We are T minus one minute and 40 seconds. The purpose of the Mimus 1 mission is to send a uh, satellite into geosynchronous orbit. It will also demonstrate the capabilities of the Saturn 1H launcher which is a new launcher from the Elegant Design Bureau. Uh, this is the first demonstration flight of two. Uh, the payload, however, is a contracted payload, so the, the proceeds of this launch will go to making further launchers available to the Elegant Design Bureau. Uh, the H1 rocket, of course, is from Rocketdyne, and the RL-10s are from Pratt & Whitney. So the launcher uh, cost is fairly substantial. It's around $80 million per launch. We are now T minus one minute. And the Elegant Design Bureau will name all of its launchers Saturn uh, in homage to the 1960s rockets uh, using the 1960s engines. So, but it is not a Saturn one that we have here. It is derived, however, from the Saturn one. You'll note that the launch clamp is a Redstone General launch clamp from FASA. It will light the H1 engine, and now we are approaching T minus 30 seconds. Okay, preparing for launch. Uh, first thing will be the H1 engine will be lit, and then the rocket will be released as the SRBs light. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we have liftoff. We have liftoff of the Mimus 1 aboard the Saturn 1H launcher. We do not have telemetry on this mission. Uh, we will have that in future missions, but currently the EDB is working on making that available to us. There is no testing data available. Werner von Kerman assures us this will work. Uh, but there is some consternation about the level of testing that has occurred on this particular rocket. The Globe 5 SRBs will burn for uh, one minute and then be released. The first stage will burn for a further three minutes after that. And then the subsequent stages each burn for four minutes apiece. The Mimus-1 satellite has a cost of $11.872 million, so it is a substantial payload. And, okay, we see here some rolling as the SRBs flame out and are released. Uh, substantial rolling here, suggesting aerodynamic issues. The H-1 rocket does not have gimbling on it and so stability is provided by the T2 strakes and the procedural dynamics all moving wings and those all moving wings are attempting to correct this motion but it seems to be some sort of oscillation as the rocket passes through maximum dynamic pressure. We'll trust that the that the EDB will attempt to correct this aerodynamic situation in future flights. However, it seems like it's under control here, and in fact, the EDB already informed range safety that this was all within design parameters. All cameras on the vehicle have been provided by Magic Smoke Industries, and in fact, there is a special camera on the payload itself, which we will see, we will see after the payload shroud is opened. A little bit of background on this launch. Of course, Kerbals first came to the solar system through what they describe as a physics glitch in their own system. Scientists speculate that it was a wormhole, but there's no evidence one way or another. And certainly we have not seen any wormhole at our end. However, uh, they came here and they have since established themselves as enthusiastic rocket designers. Uh, much to the surprise of everybody, since really uh, the people of Earth have not been that interested in this sort of thing, but the Kerbals are all in favor of it. And so uh, we've mostly been interested in watching them design their rockets, and this is the first one that they will be 
setting into orbit on their own. So we all wished them the best. The Saturn 1H was funded by sales of 3D printed figurines of the Kerbals themselves and their home planets. Future rockets will be funded by contracts. We can see uh, Florida receding away on this, on this camera here. As the Saturn 1H makes its way across the Atlantic Ocean. We should be coming up on first stage burnout. That should be coming in about 15 seconds here. As we take a look inside the third stage fairing here, this is the third stage. Okay, five seconds to first stage burnout. Oh, that seemed to be a little bit quick. Waiting for separation. Alright, and second stage. Second stage is a go. Alright. All looks well. Again, we don't have telemetry readings, so it's a little bit difficult to tell whether it is on a specified path. However, this launcher will not be going into uh, a strictly orbital path. Uh, it is going to launch the Mimas-1 into uh, a transfer orbit to geosynchronous, so it will be a slightly elongated orbit. So payload separation, uh, payload failure, fairing separation there, and we can see now the camera top. The payload is active, and we control it. The camera is an aero cam on an IR Rotatron one quarter and a powered hinge one quarter, all from Magic Smoke Industries. So you can get a good view of the Mimas one, and of course that's meant to help the payload specialist to check out that the payload is uh, alright and all systems are functional. There are many systems on the Mimas-1 as it will provide essential communication support for for uh, future missions. There will be another launch next week. Uh, we are expecting a Sputnik 4X launch atop this same Saturn 1H rocket and it will be the second demonstration mission. That mission will attempt to launch four satellites at once. It's a bit controversial and ris risky. Uh, Jebediah Kerman procured the four replica Sputnik cores and decided to put them to use. They've been highly modified and uh, some antennas have been added, solar panels, etc. But basically they're very rudimentary satellites but uh, the, the goal is to set them into low Earth orbit in order to supplement communication systems and uh, well we'll hope them we'll hope they uh, succeed at that we wish them the best the Elegant Design Bureau certainly ambitious you'll see this Mimas 1 has a lunar module ascent engine as its a main uh, engine and that engine will push it to uh, geosynchronous apoapsis and then circularize it at geosynchronous orbit so the Saturn 1H will only bring it to a uh, transfer trajectory and it will continue on that trajectory after that Okay, we are now T plus 7 minutes, 7 minutes into the flight of the Saturn 1H with its Mimas 1 payload. Telemetry data is still not available, and we don't expect it to be available on the Sputnik 4X mission either, but after that we will expect uh, test data and uh, telemetry data to be available for every flight. We are working with the Elegant Design Bureau on that. Okay, so getting ready for second stage cutout here. Second stage cutout in 15 seconds. Okay, and that's the second stage. A little bit early again.
they'll have to uh, take a look at that. Waiting for separation. Okay, an energetic separation there for the second stage. And third stage is lit. And we continue on our way to orbit. Incidentally, the Saturn 1H was nicknamed the Blue One because of its blue body and blue lights. And so it is a very distinctive launcher and instantly recognizable. Its diameter is 3 meters, its payload di diameter is 2.5 meters. And clearly its aerodynamics need some work, so those numbers might change. Its launch mass without payload is 121.6 tons, and it is rated for a 4-ton payload. Considering that the launcher cost is $80 million, uh, you can do the math and see that uh, per kilogram it costs about $20,000 to launch it to orbit. And so it is, uh, it is not the most cost-efficient system at the moment. However, the Elegant Design Bureau hopes that as they start producing these things in bulk and get a lot of contracts, they'll be able to negotiate better contracts with the engine suppliers in particular because the engines are the ones that cost a great deal. So uh, perhaps buying in bulk will help. Uh, the retraction of the communitron antenna because now it's no longer necessary. The, the communication support is now being uh, produced by... let me take a look here. Well, it's the antennae on the Mimas 1, and those would seem to be AIES Comtech CL1 dishes, and those are the ones you will see sticking out, and one of them is uh, contacting the Kennedy Space Center and the other the European Space Agency Center. So the Comtech CL1 dishes have a range of 400,000 kilometers, which means they could communicate with missions on the moon. However, they will maintain communication with mission control. The main dish on the Mimas-1 is a Reflecton KR-14, and it has a range of a billion kilometers, and it will be the one that will be responsible for communicating with long-range missions. We see here the third stage continuing. The third stage again, Pratt Whitney RL 10A3. Very efficient engine for third stage boosts. Okay, just about 30 seconds away from third stage being through here. Fifteen seconds. Okay, and that's it. And so the Saturn 1H has now done its job. It has delivered the Mimas 1 hopefully to the correct orbit. We don't have information on that yet. But uh, it certainly looks to be in space. Yes indeed. Now waiting for the separation of the payload so that the Mimas 1 can continue its journey to geosynchronous orbit. For more information on this launch, don't forget to check out the press kit available in the description of this feed. Okay, and we have payload separation as the Mimas-1 is now free of the third stage of the Saturn-1H rocket. Telemetry, which used to be provided 
by, uh, not telemetry, guidance, which used to be provided by the Telemica system. The Telemica system was allowing mission control to control the rocket up till now. Now guidance will be on board using the Remote Tech 2 computer system. And we are uh, getting a feed from the from the Mimus 1 hopefully. Ah, there we go. So the Mimus 1 camera working still so we can check out the systems and we've got we've got solar panel extension here. Excellent. So if there was any concern about that, it looks like uh, we will have power for the Mimus 1. And both solar panels successfully extended there. Okay. So we'll come back to you with the burn. Okay, we're back with the Mimus 1 burning for uh, geosynchronous apoapsis, which is 35,876 kilometers. And you can see the onboard camera giving us the view. We're getting some reports about some issues with the satellite. And we just got word that we might have to cut out and come back to you about that. So, uh, so yeah, we'll come back to you with more information about what's happening with the Mimus-1 satellite as we seem to have some indication of deviation from intended path on this feed. Oh, dear. Um... Okay, it seems like the the remote tech burn is not going according to plan because there are conflicting guidances from through the tele, Telemica system, which was ditched in the third stage. The Telemica system had commanded uh, a Mechjeb controller, the smart ASS controller, to maintain a certain attitude. And now the remote tech system is trying to override that, and the two computer systems are struggling for control over the Mimus-1. Okay, we're back. The pre-programmed Remote Tech 2 burn has been completed, not as intended, however. Uh, this, this is not technically a fault of the EDB per se, however, I'm sure there'll be some investigation as to who was responsible for this because technically it's the two conflicting computer systems the one on board the Mimus-1 and the one used to launch the Saturn-1H um, but we'll have to see anyway uh, control of the Mimus-1 was regained as it uh, completed its first orbit around Earth and is now once again flying over Cape Canaveral and so now we have direct direct communication with it and mission control is ordering the satellite to continue its burn correctly to geosynchronous and so this command is being issued manually instead of through a pre-programmed burn So again, the Mimus-1 is boosting itself to an altitude of 35,786 kilometers. And then once it gets there, it will do another burn to circularize into an orbit that has a period of 23 hours and 56 minutes, which is the rotation period of the Earth. That will allow it to maintain roughly the same position over the Earth. However, it's not a geostationary satellite because 
uh, geostationary satellites have to be placed at the equator. Uh, and this will have an inclination that, equivalent to that of Cape Canaveral itself. So it will have some deviations in its path. And uh, we hear the end of the burn for the lunar module ascent engine that is attached to the MIMAS-1. And it is now on its way to that great height where it will circularize and provide communication assistance. All other systems seem nominal and heat dissipation is nominal. All other critical systems seem good to go. Okay, we're back, and here is the circularization burn for the MIMAS-1 satellite. And uh, we're told that the camera people are trying to uh, get a good view of Earth from the onboard camera, but it doesn't look like the MIMAS-1 is oriented properly for that purpose. So we'll have to, at this point, forego a view of Earth until the MIMAS-1 has finished its burn. So it looks as though, uh, despite all the complications, including the oscillations on launch and the computer malfunction, the MIMAS-1 will reach a geosynchronous orbit. However, it won't be over the area of the globe that it was intended to be. Uh, it will be slightly offset. Uh, it will still be in communication with uh, one of the mission control centers, however, so, so that worked. And here we have the MIMAS-1 in position over the Earth. Uh, perhaps we can get an onboard view of what it looks like. Waiting on that. Ah, there we go. A little bit of issue getting good look at Earth, however, with the satellite dish in the way. However, get a quick panoramic, taking a look. And of course, the engineers will want to take a look at the craft itself to make sure uh, there hasn't been any damage. All systems right now seem to be good. So the Elegant Design Bureau is considering this mission a success, and it looks as though they will get paid for this. The MIMAS-1, of course, a multi-purpose satellite. The Elegant Design Bureau itself will be using its facilities for future missions, but it provides broader communication assistance for multiple purposes. In any case, I think uh, we'll leave it here. Uh, thank you for watching launch commentary for the MIMAS-1 um, Saturn 1H launch here on May 15th. And uh, we'll see you again with the Sputnik 4X launch on the Saturn 1H launcher. And we hope you will enjoy that as well. All right, uh, so thank you for watching and uh, Elegant Design Bureau is signing off.